know your strengths and soar with your strengths. So there's often a lot of uh, focus on developing your weaknesses or improving yourself and making sure that you're up at a certain level or standard with all of your different traits or all of your different attributes. However, I think if there's something you have a nat natural aptitude for, and it's a real strength for you, you've got passion in it and drive in it because you're good at it and you like doing it, make sure you harness that. It's a better use of your energy to put them into accelerating rather than trying to bring up things that are, are difficult or not necessarily as natural for you. To not stress, it'll be okay. I think you've already proven yourself that you're you're smart and capable. I think, you know, to, to really think about what is unique about you, what is your passion, and that will come through in driving you and driving your success in your career. One piece of advice that I was given was go out and experience things. Go out and actually pull down those barriers and, and just have a go. I would never have found myself in technology if I didn't try something new and something interesting education doesn't end when you graduate, that you will always continue learning on the job. You should always be confident that you can continue learning on the job and you don't need to know everything when you get your degree. Back yourself. Be your biggest fan. I know I personally struggled at the start when it came to applying for graduate jobs in interviews. Why would someone want to recruit me when sitting in an interview? I couldn't even show my true self or, you know, tell them why that they should hire me. It wasn't until I got this newfound confidence and I just believed in myself, uh, then I could show people who I really am and what my potential is. You need to actually think about your own career in two kind of buckets. So the first one is the skill set that you need to be thinking about around soft skills and then also your technical skills. Clearly, as you've chosen to go into STEM, you have a natural affinity for the clear, the black and white, the STEM orientation, the solving of problems, the connecting of ideas. There's also a people component, which is so very critical to get right. And it's about how you influence those around you. It's how you tell the story about how something that you're working on is so important to those around you, where the value actually lies. And it's not until you hone in on those soft skills, on how you sell yourself, how you brand yourself, how you sell your idea, how you tell a story in a way that grabs the audience's attention as opposed to standing in front of someone and saying, I've got a great tech idea. We need a million dollars to invest in this particular area because it's going to provide this. There's no emotional attachment to a piece of hardware or a technology program. But I can tell you what, if you say, I've got this brilliant idea that was born out of my dad being unwell in hospital. I think we can create a connected healthcare system which will allow me as a carer to be able to check in on him and then I can still be the loving daughter that I need to be. This will absolutely create a, an, a groundswell to your idea and I have experienced it firsthand because that's exactly how I pitched an idea for connected healthcare. When you're studying, you think your first job will be heavily focused on the technical skills. But what I learned very quickly is that there is a lot more emphasis on the softer skills. The reason it's so important is you, you can come into an extremely large organisation and feel totally overwhelmed. So you have to have this ability to be able to navigate the matrix organisation and to work through the different relationships you need to build. So some of those softer skills are your ability to network, your ability to have influencing conversations. These things do take time to develop. More importantly, as you go through your career, the softer skills become far more important in working with a team, developing and collaborating on projects together. Technical skills are important to an extent. They're really good to be able to solve your own problems and not have to go to someone else if you want to get something done quickly. But softer skills end up being so much more important as you progress in your career. I think personally as a manager, those are much harder skills to teach. It's really hard to teach someone how to work with other people 
or how to present to other people. And the, some of those softer skills are really difficult to perfect or impossible to perfect. Um, and to be honest, social expectations change. So softer skills are really important to learn and to continue to hone basically for your entire career. You'll continue to work on those. I would say networking is one of the most important things that that has helped me in my career. Um, all of the all of the jobs I've gotten have been a result of me looking out at what other people are doing and what other people have done, saying whether I think I would like that or not, and starting to tell people. and And that's what networking is: is really making those connections so that when something does open up in an area that someone knows you're interested in, they think of you first. And it feels a little bit unnatural when you first start. And I guess back in my day, there was no LinkedIn. So it was literally a phone call or a hallway conversation or a request just to catch up for a coffee. But what I found with the onset of the platforms that we have at our fingertips, being really active on LinkedIn and reaching out to people is so very important and creating that connection because it's the network that you form that will both inspire you and challenge you. Go a little bit broader and look for those people that have different vocational experiences, but there's something about that person and their passion and their purpose that inspires you because you'll glean something from them and you'll learn something from them. And that's what a network's all about learning and supporting that old adage of it's not what you know it's who you know I think particularly in STEM or in medical devices that can be very true it is a relatively small and close industry and networks can really help you in terms of getting in front of the right people at the right time networking is really important staying in contact with people in the university your you know your friends and your colleagues in the university that you graduate with is always a great way to build up your network and be aware of potential jobs in the future as well. Um, I'm not personally the best at networking. My partner's way better at networking than me and it's, it's really paid off. Um, but it is really important to maintain a good uh, standing with people who have similar interests, similar passions, similar professions to you especially in times like COVID as an example, where the connections that we've been making are over virtual platforms. Um, there's nothing more valuable or more impactful than having a personal connection or personal relationship with um, people or whoever you might be meeting. Mm -hmm.